So when would we take advantage of seamless single sign-on? Well, first of all, if we're not using federation, because we've already talked about the federation authentication method just gets a single sign-on. It was the original way to get single sign-on. If we're not using that, and if we are also are not joining or registering our Windows devices with Azure. Because if you remember from our last video, if we join or, reg or register our Windows devices, preferably Windows 10 devices to Azure, we also get single sign-on because when we authenticate, when we log on in the morning, it's authenticating us to Azure. It could be doing both in a hybrid, right? Both on-premise for Active Directory and Azure Active Directory. But if we have registered and joined our machines to Azure, then we're getting that single sign-on automatically. So no federation, no device joined or registered. Well, now we can take advantage of, of seamless single sign-on. And it's the, really the only way we're gonna get to single sign-on. So the, uh, single, or the seamless single sign-on is gonna work with password hash authentication and pass through authentication. Remember, both of these two are going to require that users provide their username and passwords. They're going to be challenged when they go to a cloud resource, their, their mailbox in the cloud, SharePoint, Teams, whatever. They're going to be challenged. Now, we could tell our application or our browser to remember the password. We all know that. We can have our browser remember a password. That's not really actual single sign-on. That's just telling our app to remember that password for a while. If we change our password, then we're going to get challenged the next time because our password is going to be wrong. We're talking about true single sign-on, which, well, which would take care of that password change for us. So true single sign-on. So what happens and, and what gets us to this seamless single sign-on? Well, seamless single sign-on is another one of those things. It's an option that you can turn on with Azure AD Connect. In the Azure AD Connect wizard, if you have password hash or pass-through authentication, seamless single sign-on is a little checkbox that you can check off. What's that going to do? Well, again, it's a bit of smoke and mirrors. It actually puts a phony computer account, well, it's a real computer account, there's just no actual computer associated with it, in your on-premise active directory. And what's going to happen is when you boot up and you uh, uh, log on to your on-premise active directory, when you go to the cloud into, let's say, your uh, Exchange mailbox, normally the Azure authentication service would know who you are. They would say, okay, what's your username and what's your password? Well, in this case, if we've set up seamless single sign-on, what's gonna happen is the Azure authentication service is going to call into that computer account that we've created on-premise that, that AD Connect creates for us. And that computer account is gonna use a little Kerberos trickery to actually tell Azure, the Azure authentication service, yes, this person has already logged on. Boom, we get single sign-on, but it's called seamless single sign-on. And again, it works with password hash authentication and pass through authentication, but you actually have to enable it in Azure AD Connect. One more thing about seamless single sign-on, it's opportunistic, which just means if it doesn't work for any reason, then like, for instance, if someone went in and accidentally deleted that computer account in our on-premise Active Directory because they don't really know what it's there for or they forgot what it's there for, then the user's just gonna be prompted for the username and password. So they're still gonna get in. But if seamless single sign-on is working properly, they should not be prompted for their username and their password. So that's seamless single sign-on. Again, that can be used if you're not using a federated logon or a federated authentication with Azure, uh, or if you have not registered or joined your devices to Azure. Both of those two ways will get you the regular single sign-on. Seamless single sign-on is for when you're not using one of those and you want a single sign-on, which means you're using password hash or pass-through authentication. Thanks for watching, everybody. Remember to subscribe below if you haven't already. We'll see you in the next video.